Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning how to find the buoyancy force exerted on a partially immersed object, and at the end of the video, we will be working through an example problem where we will be applying the theory we have learnt to a real life scenario. This video will build on principles we learnt previously, where we introduced Archimedes' principle, so I will leave the link to that video in the description for you to check out if you wish to before starting this one. We will start off then by considering an object with a uniform density of rho naught that is in equilibrium, floating partially immersed in a static, homogeneous liquid with a density of rho. The weight of the object is equal to the density of the object multiplied by its volume, so we get W equals rho naught g v naught, with v naught being the object's volume and the weight of the object W acting vertically downwards through the object's centre of mass Cm. Archimedes' principle defines that the buoyancy force acting on a fully or partially immersed object is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by the object, and so it follows that the buoyancy force acting on our object, Fb, is equal to rho g v s, where v s denotes the volume of the object that is immersed in the liquid, or in other words, below the free surface of the liquid. Note that we can also write the immersed volume as v s equals k v naught where k is the proportion of the object's volume that is immersed. This is useful for when we are not given the volume of the object, but we are given the percentage of the object that is immersed. Here, if 75% of the object was immersed, for example, k would be equal to 0.75, and so k must be greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to 1. Therefore, we can write that the buoyancy force acting on the object, Fb, equals rho g v s, which also equals rho g k v naught, and f b acts through the centre of mass of the liquid volume displaced by the object. For the case where both the object and the liquid have uniform densities, the centre of mass of the liquid volume displaced by the object is the same point as the centre of mass of the object. For a partially immersed object to be in a state of static equilibrium, the buoyancy force must be equal to the weight of the object, and these two forces, Fb and W, must have the same vertical line of action. If there is a case where this last condition is not true, the object will be subject to turning moments, which could result in the object rotating or flipping. This is the reason we sometimes see icebergs flipping after some of the ice has melted or broken off. If the object is in static equilibrium, and the object and liquid are both homogeneous, Fb is equal to W, and substituting in our equations for each, we get rho g k v naught is equal to rho naught g v naught. Rearranging for k, we get k is equal to rho naught over rho. We can use this then to calculate the percentage of an object that is immersed without knowing the volume or calculating any forces. For example, icebergs typically have a density of 920 kg per meter cubed, and float in seawater which typically has a density of 1025 kg per meter cubed. Therefore, the proportion of the iceberg that is immersed in the seawater is equal to 920 divided by 1025, which equals 0.898, and so approximately 90% of an iceberg is immersed below the surface. That then covers the theory for an object partially immersed in the liquid, so let's see how this can be applied to a real life situation and work through an example problem. The diagram here shows an empty rectangular ship with a plan view cross sectional area of A equals 400 meters squared, so if you were to look down on the ship from above it would cover a rectangular area equal to 400 meters squared. And this ship is floating on a body of water with a density of rho equals 1025 kilograms per meter cubed. The ship has a uniform depth of h equals 8 meters and a weight of 200 tons. And note that one ton is equal to 9810 newtons. The empty ship floats with the base at a depth of d below the surface of water. Firstly, find the depth below the surface of the empty ship's base, d and then find the maximum load in tons that the ship can carry if for safety the maximum depth the base can be below the surface d max is equal to 0.85 h 
If you would like to have a go at this problem yourself before we work through it, you're welcome to pause the video here. Now that you've had a chance to attempt it, let's work through the solution. Using Archimedes' principle, where the buoyancy force acting on the partially immersed ship is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by the ship, we get the buoyancy force acting on the ship is equal to rho g dA, as d times a is the volume of the ship below the surface of the water. For the ship to float in equilibrium, Fb must equal W, and we can assume that Fb and W have the same vertical line of action due to the symmetrical nature of the ship. Therefore, rho g dA is equal to W. Rearranging for d, we get that d is equal to W divided by rho g A, and then substituting in our values stated in the question, d is equal to 200 times 9810, this bit just converts the weight in tonnes to newtons, and this is divided by 1025 times 9.81 times 400, which is equal to 0.488. Therefore, we can say that the base of the empty ship is at a depth of 0.5 metres below the surface. Now, moving on to the second part of the question, we let Fm denote the maximum load that can be added to the ship whilst satisfying the requirements above that d max cannot be greater than 0.85h. For the ship to float in equilibrium under these conditions, Fb must equal W plus Fm, and so Fm must equal Fb minus W, which is equal to rho g d max times a minus W. Again, substituting in our values provided in the question, Fm is equal to 1025 times 9.81 times 0.85, times 8, times 400, minus 200 times 9810. Therefore, Fm is equal to 25.39 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons, and then to convert this back into tons, we will divide it by 9810 to get 2588 tons. So we can conclude that to ensure the ship floats at a safe level where the base of the ship is at a depth no greater than 0.85h below the surface, the maximum load that can be added to the ship is 2,588 tonnes. And we should note that it is required for the load to be added evenly to maintain symmetry. That then is an example of how we can apply Archimedes' principle to a real-life problem for a partially immersed object. In the next video, we'll be working through an example problem for a fully immersed object, so I'll see you there. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.